Hi, this is Clutch, and this is the truth of love. Today's topic is remembering the avoidant. Now, this particular topic is about my relationship with the avoidant um, almost two years ago. Oh my God, how time flies. And in these past two years, I have learned a great deal of lessons and have had a number of reflections that I wanted to share with all of you. But for now, I wanted to just talk about the experience and what led up to it. And I want to talk about it from a perspective of there not being any malice, not being any maliciousness associated with the interaction, but a general overall understanding of what happened. So this relationship, like most relationships, whenever you have two people with conflicting attachment styles, is that it didn't start off toxic. Um, there were initially at the beginning um, many positive affirmations on both our parts. I would thank her for helping me keep up my physical fitness, and she would um, embrace me about my positive and analytical thinking on her work and the way she wanted to present certain ideals. And, and there was an admiration on both our parts, understanding the other person and understanding the different perspective. But where things started to change was whenever there was a conflict, we each had our different set narratives of how to deal with situations. Me being a confrontational person, I like to nip things in the bud and I like to deal with them very analytically. And unfortunately for, for those that tend to be very avoidant, this can be incredibly exhausting, especially if you're dealing with a situation that can be emotionally draining. Um, and what ended up happening there was over time, resentment grew. Um, she felt, in an essence, that I was becoming emotionally dependent on her. Um, and to a certain extent, I think she probably had a point because up to that point, um, I was still establishing my social networks. I was brand new in an American city. I had essentially packed and moved to a different part of the continent, let alone a different country. And I was getting used to the culture clash. I was getting accustomed to the culture shock of coming from a very welcoming and embracing city in the Canadian tundra and, and coming to a, a tropical established large city such as Los Angeles. What happened is something I didn't quite expect. And that's that aspect was that I started becoming more vulnerable quicker than I had initially anticipated. I had made a an initial promise to myself when I moved to Los Angeles that I wasn't going to get into any serious relationships, at least for the first initial year, until I got established, until I had a social network and had a set of friends that I could connect with and, and build a, a foundation on. And that, I would say, was my first mistake. I felt a very strong connection with a person who I felt was trustworthy. And at the time, um, I did made the decision that I felt was the most um, established and the most intellectually thought out. I believed, uh, unfortunately, to my, <laughs> to my own um, delusion, that our intellectualism would be enough to tackle any issues that the opposing attachment styles would create. And what we often would deal with was a dynamic of pushing and pulling. As I pulled away, she pulled in. And as she pulled away, I tried to jump back in. And there was always this hot and cold behavior. And, and the thing with this kind of dynamic, and we tend to see this fairly often when it comes to, to fearful avoidance that tend to date each other, is you have an ever-increasing level of momentum, an ever-increasing level of intensity as these emotions start building and building. So what starts off as a small argument eventually exacerbates to a very large argument. And until you have that leveling out where both parties take responsibility and start embracing and accepting the point of view of the other person, this usually ends in some kind of conclusion. And the thing is, when, whenever you're dealing with two attachment styles of, of this extreme level, uh, an AA and a DA, what ends up happening is um, quite the opposite. You 
essentially start walking on eggshells, hoping that you're not going to spark an argument with the other person because although you embrace this person and you enjoy their company, you also feel like your next fight will probably be your last. And this is what essentially happened. And I didn't necessarily enter this relationship being an anxious attachment. What ended up happening was my anxious attachment was triggered and sparked by this individual constantly pulling away. And this is where um, I usually tell people you have to be incredibly cautious when you date someone of this attachment, not because I'm not saying that you, you can't find a solid foundation and you can't be secure in front of these people, but if you lack the experience of dealing with this situation and I've gained a fair bit of experience since the situation. I can say safely, I wouldn't have the same reactions as I did back then as I do now, but I also wouldn't put myself in that position. That's that's the retrospect of, of having hindsight and having time to reflect because I know what my value is now. And part of that experience has this aspect of if I were to deal with someone that pulls away in this fashion, I know immediately to either A, dismiss them as a potential candidate, or B, just not put myself in that kind of vulnerability because it's just not worth it. And of course, in this particular dynamic, in this particular relationship, things started to intensify. Um, the level of intimacy grew, the level of emotional conflicts grew, the amount of tension at home grew. And this grew to the point where, as we were starting to resolve more and more and more, she started opening up quicker than I was comfortable with. And this came to, I would say, to pass when I was eventually invited to spend Christmas with her after being with her for only about three months. And I remember telling her I needed time to think about it. I remember going for a drive and calling my best friend at the time and, and telling him, this girl just ruined the relationship because she's put me in a position where if I reject this, it shows I don't have confidence in this relationship. But if I accept it, it shows that I'm just way too anxious. And that's when I knew. That's when I knew it was the beginning of the end. It's not to say that I wasn't emotional after that point. It's to say that intellectually, I knew that this wasn't going to work out. And it was kind of a, a surreal moment for me because I had had this vision about um, leaving my ex fiance in Ottawa and, and leaving the relationship afterwards and, and all the pain I had gone through and all the progression I had gone through. And I had met this amazing person and I thought in my head anyways, that this was it. This was the life I was looking for. This was the reason I had put everything on hold and I had gone through all the suffering I had gone through. And eventually I had met someone who I considered an equal as far as part of um, my intellectualism and an equal as part of my understanding of how relationships worked and how um, the progression should be established. And I built this narrative, this image of someone that didn't quite exist at least not in the traditional sense, I essentially put her on a pedestal. And that's where essentially I went wrong. And this is where I usually tell people on my Discord, much, much to your protests of when relationships tend to progress very, very quickly. It's the progression that, look, just because something progresses quickly and just because it feels incredibly good, doesn't necessarily make it a good thing, but it also doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing. It just means, look, if things are progressing this quickly, you need to keep an open mind and understand there is a possibility that what you're experiencing is a high degree of limerence, which tends to be extremely potent whenever you're dealing with someone who is your opposite. And this is something that we have to be consciously aware of. Unfortunately, um, Eventually, the, the outcome of that situation is the offer for me coming home for Christmas is eventually take, taken back. And of course, that made me feel like absolute crap because um, I actually ended up spending Christmas alone that year. And it was just something that I, 
I did my best to accept and I did my best to accommodate and adapt, but it was clear to me and I saw the end coming, but it was clear to me that the relationship was over. And of course, um, it didn't fix or it didn't uh, completely avoid the emotional um, climax as, as, as we eventually broke up. And the way I was broken up with was a very brutal way. Um, essentially, what had happened was she arrived on New Year's Eve and told me within 30 seconds of arriving after I hadn't seen her in three weeks that she wanted to break up. And this is, this is the typical narrative of the avoidant which is, I'm just going to be cutthroat as possible, and I'm just going to be straight to the point, and they're going to logically understand where I'm coming from. But there has been an entire process that's taken place there that I wasn't a part of, and that process included reinforcement from other avoidance, reinforcement from an environment that didn't quite know me or understand me or understood my point of view. And and we've talked about this on the Discord and we've talked about this on this channel where, you know, our friends and family only want what's best for us, but they very rarely actually know what the experience is about. They've only heard one perspective of the story. And this is where regret usually comes. And I'm not saying that I regret this or that she'll regret this someday, but we have to be cautious that when we seek out advice from other people, especially from other people who don't know the other side, from other people who have only heard our perspective, that eventually when the hate and the aggression and the emotion subsides, we aren't left with a level of regret. And that's usually what happens to most people in these kind of situations. So <laughs> the idea out of that situation, without getting too much into detail regarding, you know, what the climax was and me having to, you know, jump from Airbnb to Airbnb and having to essentially piece my life back together. Um, I regret that relationship mainly because of the fallout that followed it. Um, I learned very quickly that LA was very different than, than Ottawa. And I learned very quickly that it isn't always in my best interest to be vulnerable with certain kinds of people, no matter how intellectual they happen to be or no matter how uh, good intention they happen to be. People will show you their true colors in the worst of circumstances and in that particular case, I saw my ex's dark side. And that dark side is not something I ever want to be a part of or ever want to have in my life. But this is where the reflection comes back tenfold because because of that experience, I was able to build myself. I was able to become more secure. So in retrospect, I wouldn't have that experience any other way. At the same time, I would be able to look at this experience and say, look, what happened was a shitty thing, but that shitty thing has allowed me to grow. The main difference is I understand that what's helped me grow is my reaction to this experience, not the actions of my ex. Alternatively, I know for a fact that she has promoted that, you know, she's encourage growth in other people because of her dismissive actions. Say what you want about dismissives and the reasons that they do things. I don't think there's malicious intent here, but don't come to me. Don't go to anyone and provide a poisonous mushroom and then tell me, well, what doesn't kill you only made you stronger. The idea there is you have a serious problem with commitment and intimacy. And until you address it, and until you confront it, and until you acknowledge that elephant in the room, that elephant that says, I am afraid of being vulnerable to anyone that shows me a level of intimacy, you are just as much of the problem as I am. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would ask that you hit the thumbs up icon below. For those of you that haven't subscribed, I would highly recommend that you do. 
And of course, if you're interested in joining our Discord, information regarding that can be found in the description below. And of course, we have a great community that's always willing to help. With that said, this is Clutch, signing off.